we are very excited and grateful to have Mahmoud Al-Jamal with us today. Mahmoud is coming to us live from Dar al Salaam in Jerusalem, the Holy Land. Mahmoud is the son of Sidi Muhammad Al-Jamal, the Sheikh and the guide of Shaduli Sufis around the world. Mahmoud holds the pole for the continuation of Sidi's legacy through the Jerusalem kindergarten and by hosting and welcoming visitors to Jerusalem where they can immerse themselves in the holy places while walking deeply in a place some call the spiritual center of the world. He unselfishly gives of his time, energy, and resources to bring the teachings of peace, love, mercy, freedom, and justice to all people open to receive. He comes to us in the earliest morning hours of the day in Jerusalem. And we beloveds from around the US and the world are very grateful for his presence. His teaching today is on walking the Sufi path without the physical presence of the Sheikh. Mahmoud, welcome and thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, thank you, Pat, for this uh, beautiful introduction. Uh, and, and my apologies for my technical difficulties. Uh, first of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salam ala Sayyid al-Khalq wa al-Mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i This is the same introduction that he used to recite and say in the beginning of his teaching that he had done through his life in the Aqsa Mosque uh, basically every Friday through his uh, 60-something years of uh, serving the people of the Holy Land and all over the world. Uh, it, it, it has not been easy to us humans in the human level to proceed uh, without the physical presence of our faith and master. However, this, uh, this question was brought up last year during Sidi's memorial with the beloved who are here in Jerusalem. And uh, basically, uh, this issue have, is not new. It, 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 each uh, followers of the Sheikh uh, have had to deal with this kind of situation at one point or another. It's inevitable. Humans will leave, just like the, the disciples of our Holy Prophet ﷺ had to deal with this. It was difficult, uh, but the the guiding light was never uh, God. It, it continues. Our our greatest and everlasting master is our Holy Prophet He is the first Sufi. He is the first Sufi master in, in the way maybe he was not named the Sufi master because the word the word prophet and messenger is much higher. He is the master of all the masters of that order. And, and of course, he is the messenger and, 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 and the direct connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To us, that through him, we have attained all what we have attained, you know. Uh, so to us, uh, the question occurred from even uh, the love from England, like when somebody wants to make uh, like a bayah, with who? So we said, with you. I mean... Uh, you as a follower of the path, somebody who have walked the walk on this path, you have the right to accept the promise of anybody to do good deeds, to, to share the love and the peace and the compassion and the justice to, to, with you and with the rest of humanity. This is a, these are like solid point of our structure, of our order, if you may. And, and therefore, uh, of course, the, the situation does change because when you have uh, a guide that helps you a lot as in, in technical terms. However, the, the main role of, of the shape really is to help you and show you how to bring uh, up what's in it. So, in so many ways, you do have it. 
First of all, if we go back to our uh, initial being, when uh, Hayyidna Muhammad said, uh, the first thing Allah has created is the life of your prophet, O Jabir. He was addressing one of the disciples, his name was Jabir, and uh, indicating that, first of all, that we are creatures of life. Our existence was a spray of light through Allah when he had embedded this uh, force in Adam uh, and when he asked the angels to bow, not to bow to Adam, the, the, the being of clay, the way that he was created, it was of his majesty and his light-like, that light-like nature that was embedded in him is the extension and the reflection of Allah's light on the human being. So that, that thing might be a little complex, but it, it's easy to explain when we, when we address that the moon and the sun, the, light, the moon gets the light from the sun, yet the moon is not the sun. So this is somewhat similar to the picture. We are an extension of, Allah, of Allah's light. And it indicates, it says in the Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have brought all the sons of Adam and had them testify upon themselves, am I, am I not your God? They witnessed yes. So they were, that bring us, uh, brings us to the idea that we were before we were. We existed before we existed in the, in the physical format. We were, we were in, in, in the world of life. And we through that in, in that format until we came to be uh, in bodies. And uh, now, now comes the role of the shape. When we get distracted with physicality, with our being, with our garden, with our family, with our kids, our life, we happen to get uh, uh, overshadowed and overcrowded with the physicality that we neglect somehow and we lose our ability to connect to our life life. So the Sheikh comes with that, with this uh, set of rules, if you may, or with the, the how to enable us to connect back to what is in us because Allah has created us with everything that we need intact in us with the ability to evolve. The idea of Sufism mainly is to evolve spiritually so that we can obtain higher levels of comprehension. That's why we come to the level of the nafs, levels of the nafs. How it starts Purely physical, once everything physical, once everything nice, everything beautiful, everything expensive, everything selfish, everything and everything. Uh, and that, that shows the, how the world is now today. Uh, and it is uh, the sort of uh, physical being that always orders you to do things that are not for others. Everything is for you. You are the center of everything. And of course, due to the fact that we exist with other people, with other creatures, with nature. We are obligated to, to look out for, first of all, for other people, and then for our uh, for nature around us, like uh, what we're doing now, we are using nature, good time. And uh, mainly connect to Allah, because we have become weak when we kind of got this and, and, and this goes, uh, what, 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 what the Sheikh teaches us is, first of all, the Adam, you know, like to maintain the good manners with our nature. Uh, it is very important that, that we maintain that supreme kind of really good behavior. If one of us is invited to, uh, to visit with some president or some prince, he gets all dressed up beautifully, well groomed, get a haircut, wear whatever is nice and lovely because he has to meet the prince. 
uh, we have the privilege to be in the presence of Allah five times a day on a regular basis and other times whenever we choose, whenever uh, in the middle of the night, in many ways, uh, during Hajj, during the fasting, uh, all that we are in the presence of Allah in, in a special occasion yet. We're not on the level of transparency of that uh, uh, comprehension of how holy, how holy that presence is. We never are ready. Therefore, we don't get the sweet food from that. Meditation and, and, and khalwa is, 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 is a good way for us to sit and think and, and, and get to the idea he who knew himself will know God because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in you his secret when he says you think little of yourself and in you is the secret of the universe and that's Allah saying well, when he says that the, 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 the shaykh teaches us how to know ourselves and uh, we have all that it takes for instance when we uh, think about uh, our brain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in us to, 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 to run our, our physical being it selects brain and it's a, it's a right side of the brain the left is, is in charge of all the physicality all the technicality the mathematics the money the, 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 the daily life and and all these things, how you drive, how you do all this, that's the left side. The right side is in charge of beauty, of taste, of sexuality, of love. Uh, we hardly use that. We, we, we almost we don't know how to use it. Uh, specifically ones who never encountered spirituality or, or religion in that way. Um, the main the, the zikr and 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 and, and the halwa and uh, uh, the meditation of in, in other places of course uh, is a way to help us and teach us how to tap into that right the right side is so powerful that it has the energy and the power and the force to even heal you from any disease imaginable in, in, in yoga they teach them how in the ultimate level the ones who have been in yoga for years and have obtained high levels in that uh, activity to reduce the level of oxygen that goes to the left right side the left side of the brain to give the right side of the brain a breather tap a little bit into it and they exp express how pleasurable how beautiful the feeling was when they were able to use little bit that right side of the To just get to use that a lot more with a lot less effort when they are really in, in the presence of the Sheikh, when they are uh, in, 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 in the Zikr itself. I mean, you see people that have sold their life totally to this because the pleasure there is an ultimate security and ultimate love. Based on that uh, comes the peace and the equality and the justice and the love for, for all because all the struggle that we have after that between the people and the nations is really totally irrelevant. It's, it's a small time knickknack. So it's not important anymore. We're dealing with the highest of the high, with the most giving with the most generous with the most beautiful thing one could ever ever experience uh, it all depends also on what we what we call the himma when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say it says in, in in the hadith not in the quran in the hadith on his behalf the holy prophet says that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us his qualities all of them his 20 and his 99 names as qualities as a gift to each based on his ability his one uh his willing and his, and his willing to sacrifice and and to take as much as he can 
to address that sometimes you would see somebody who is not uh, does not look physically strong but we say he's got a lot of heart he took the quality al qawi the, the power from allah he took that allah gives he gave us everything so he gives us qualities from his power and and and, and sometimes you see somebody who by our standards maybe is not pretty uh, and people look, this is the most beautiful person I've ever seen. Because it's called Tajalliyat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offers this with, with, without condition, his qualities to us. Now, the, the, the beauty of this, the Sufi is after he's taught, really, and, and was able to walk that walk, is to be able to see the signs. There are always signs for us to see. The, the, the thing is that non Sufis don't pay attention to the signs that are all over the place. We say Alamit al Ibn Taysir, that means the sign, the, the, the sign of the permission is when Allah makes things, opens the doors and makes things easy. Then also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when He says, My servant, it's getting closer to me with offering, with his offerings, with his prayers, with his generosity, with his zakat, with his uh, ritual, with his love and care for others and everything. Till, until I love him, when I do love him, I become the hand that he pushes with, I become the vision he sees with, I, beca I become the leg that he walks with, Whatever he asks, he's given. Whatever he asks, is given. So that, that kind of uh, it, 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 that summons the rewards and, and the philosophy that is somewhat complex, but not exactly, because it is complex because it, 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 it has, it's conditional. What we have to evolve, we have to walk that walk. And, and, and we always know what's right and what's wrong. This is by our nature, we do. It's a matter of choice, really. We, we choose the, the, always the easy way. And the easy way is always uh, uh, not that safe. The hard way requires obligations to be fulfilled. But we are equipped to fulfill all of them. And, and the rewards are, are extremely high. Uh, when they ask somebody, what if, if, if when we die we found out that there is no heaven, there is no hell, there is no God. He said, you will not be better off than if you found out that there is God and there is heaven and there is hell. You're better off doing what you're doing. Uh, the, the evolution is, is, is one fundamental thing and even uh, not only Siri but uh, also other masters like even uh, in the room was the one that, uh, the first one to declare openly that spiritually humans are, are, are very evil. And, and, and nowadays this is very, very, we are in so much desperation to this aspect that we spiritually have a huge meeting ground with other faiths also, because also uh, our main obliga obligation as, as Muslims and as Sufis uh, is really to maintain and work for a beautiful and loving relation with all mankind, with all humans. It is important. It, it, it is fundamental for us to, to love because the real relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is love. We are an extension of His love. The, the philosophy that rules the universe is also love. The, the way the universe operates with itself is some kind of attraction. We can call it love if you want, but somehow we are we we we, we are used to give the name love to humans between themselves, maybe to their to their pets and, and such things. But it is love whether we like it or not, the whole existence is solely based on love. So why is it so strange that we 
uh, as, as Sufis and, uh, and Muslims uh, declare that our whole foundation and our, our whole task and whole mission really is a message of love. It's a message of love. And love requires that I like for you what I like for me. So that's equality. And, and also it, require, it requires that I do you just. So that's justice. So it requires that I, I, I care about your safety. So that is peace. So all, all together, it's, it, it, it comes as one package. It never is a uh, pick and choose. It's all together in, 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 in so many ways, really. And uh, the, the, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm putting these things kind of together is because they are so much related to, to us, specifically see these uh, followers and students, because he actually preached and taught us these things and each one he gave to as much as he can handle. And each one took as much as he can take. And, and now people have evolved. Every one of us have evolved, including me. Uh, even after CD's passing. So now I'm, I'm regretting why did not I take more? And so everybody else would say, oh, I should have asked. I should have maybe paid more attention. But guess what? You were not ready then. You took as much as you could. But now you can proceed. You are you are in. That's the, the blessing and the mercy. You are in. And it, it, it is a fact that they never go away. They oversee us. You know, like sheikhs, prophets, messengers. They, they last with us for, for until the end of time. I, I, I feel Sidi's presence all the time. I, I see him in, in everything. Not, not because he used to live here, but um, his message is, 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 is a living thing. One, one really cannot uh, ignore its existence, you know? And, and uh, based on that, we really are able to proceed and, 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 and to fulfill, attempt to fulfill the obligation. Of course, it comes also, our obligation is as much as we can. We never are ask, are ask for more than, you, than we can handle. However, however, we're back to the, to the story of, of evolution. Evolution, spiritual evolution is, is something that we have always to keep our eyes on. That every day, I became closer to Allah. Every day, I have to do something to get me closer. Because then we go back to the idea, I become the eye that he sees with. If one sees or, or notices that he's, he's making mistakes, he's making bad calculations, he should really or she start thinking, what did I miss? Did I really do something to get a little closer to Allah? Did I, uh, for instance, neglect my prayer? Did I, did some poor um, uh, person ask me for help and I ignored uh, whatever something? Because also it says that our hearts do rust like iron does, so we should, we should keep cleansing them. And in the end of that evolution, the mind will cave in to the heart. For it to get to that point and to that level, the evolution has, has to keep going. And, and it, it's kind of like swimming. You cannot stop swimming if you are in the water or you will drown. This is our path. This is our walk. This is our way. Uh, swimming is a must. And uh, moving in, in the path once one takes the promise and, 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 and starts walking, the end of that walking, just like the beginning of that walking is Allah and the end of that walking is Allah, so it has no beginning or end. You keep going till you are there. And when, once you are there, you, nobody has no language that exists can actually be 
described by his day. That's why most of the Sikhs maintain silence in the image. And they have uh, accomplished the seeing and the feeling of, of the beauty of the age. They couldn't find words. They 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 were they were try, they tried to hide themselves after or behind poetry that spoke about being drunk. Uh, that spoke about being insane and crazy, like Halal, like like uh, many of, of the Sufi masters uh, in in the past. Uh, of course, this uh, idea now. Uh, with, the, with the inheritance of, 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 of Siri and, and, and the fact that some of us did not have maybe a closer with, with him. That is merely why we uh, are opening Dar es Salaam here for, for brothers and sisters who, who would like and able to come and, and also in, in, in America with centers like the uh, UPAC and, and with Saleh Qatar and you know, with, the, with the, the form of peace, they, if we are able to walk in their footsteps, it's good to imitate. You see, Sayyidina Muhammad Ali Salaam said, said He said, pray like you see me pray. It's not an indication of the actual prayer, it is copy me. The Sheikh also tells us, copy me, do what I used to do. Walk, walk in my footsteps, walk in my shoes. See how I used to do things. Remember what I used to say. Live it. And also deliver it because the fact that I told you and now you know it's an obligation for you to deliver it and share it with, with, with others. It's very important that we share the good news, that we share the blessing that Allah has uh, blessed us with. The fact that Allah has guided us and led us to, to be a part of the being of Siri or, 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 or for other people of any Siri is actually a supreme uh, a blessing from Allah and a huge gift that is indescribable really that we were able to be in somewhat, some form of direct connection with our maker, in the most beautiful, the most non-threatening, the, the most non-demanding, uh, with pride, with dignity, with comfort, with the, everything that we are ordered is good, good for us, proven now, even scientifically. The way that we, are, we were taught to eat, the way we were taught to, to wear our clothes, the way we are taught to walk, the way we are taught to, to behave with our family, the relationship with our wives and husbands, uh, with our kids, with all that was, was very important when the Holy Prophet was praying, his two grandsons came and, and, and climbed on his back and he stayed making sujood until they were done playing. That's, um, that's education and that's, in that education is love. And, and now if you want to go psychologically, have somebody this thing happened to him and he or she chose to push the kids away. I'm, I'm praying now. The kids will never forget this until they grow old. So it, 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 it is important. It is important for us to copy the shape. In, in, in that way, we are on the path of being little shapes in the process of evolution. Because the obligation of what we have learned from this shape is uh, to proceed on that legacy, on that, on that footstep, on, on, on this knowledge, on this, uh, to keep that line of life uh, intact. Because it is our obligation to deliver to, to other, uh, uh, to the following generation, to the people who are in need, to, to the ones who come ask us for, help, what do I do? I mean, imagine like uh, it is not required from uh, us if, if, if somebody, not from the order or not from the tariqah comes 
and, and one thing to know, one thing to learn, what do I do? I say, well, it is me, my thing is that, so I really can't help you. Of course you can. You just do with him exactly what you just did with you. Do your best. You, you have allowed him to enter, you put him on the beginning of the first step. It is your obligation to do that. You help him as much as you can. And then he's in. Then it's, it's, it's on him, it says him. There are like, in Sidi's order, in Sidi's way, he had, he had mercy. You can actually offer more than, because they, they have learned more. So they can offer more. The ones who are partly, like, not on the same level of accomplishment in that, who have studied less, for instance, uh, not to say anybody is better than uh, any, uh, the, the rest, but um, one who has the ability to help more can actually give more. I mean, and, 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 and we take it, uh, I mean, I have many of Sidi's uh, followers uh, and students from here, the local ones, they, they come to me, I tell them, guess what, I'm not useless, but I can help you. I will help you to the best I can, and I will never abandon you, I will always be at your service till the end of my time. And this has uh, gave them peace. Based on their human, they can, they can evolve. They can evolve. It's, 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 we're not giving uh, the full salvation. They are partners. They have to do things themselves too. The Sheikh becomes your partner. The Sheikh becomes your father, the Sheikh becomes your brother, your friend, uh, your lover even, in, in, in that way. Uh, he helps you, he helps you to tap into what's in you. What's in you. It, it, it's very important to, to for, for all the beloveds to know that, that, that fact, really. It's, it, it's very important. In, in each one of us, there is combined we are our shape's knowledge together. So imagine if, if somebody is invited to the community and, 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 and he's with them. In our, in our oneness, we are the shape. And this was even in, in, during the shape's uh, physical presence. Because he taught this one something and that one something and the other one something based to their, to their needs, but combined it was the whole one. That togetherness is, is, is very fun, fundamental, and, and even uh, in, in, in the Quran it says, It indicates that unite uh, under the name of Allah and do not get divided, do not get separated. So together you are all tied up to a rope. The, the, the other end of that rope is in Allah's hands. So you are really grabbing onto a rope that is so tight so solid and so directly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is very important that, that we do uh, maintain our, our, our gatherings, our, that's, where, that's how we keep the shift, that's how our order lives after the shift. And of course at one point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses somebody and shows him, shows him that you can now do. And he will know because it, it's an order that is given, given to a person. Now it is your obligation to carry on that flag and lead the people who need to, 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 to get closer to me. Just like he did with the prophets. The, sheikh, the story of the Sheikh with Allah is, is somewhat, somewhat has similarities with the story of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the, with the prophets and messengers. They were regular, regular human beings. Allah chose them and gave them a message. The things Allah chooses them and gives them a mission. That's different. Gives them a mission to help the people of a certain time. And uh, sometimes the line proceeds. The Sheikh delivers to another Sheikh, to another Sheikh. Uh, and so this is like the story of, of sometimes we have two Sheikhs at the same time. Just like it happened between uh, Jalaluddin Rumi and, and Shamsuddin Tabrizi, they don't even know who the, 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 the Sheikh of Kuh. Uh, 
they were in the same time, they were on the same wavelength, they, they, they have obtained almost the same uh, degree of knowledge and, 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 and enlightenment. And uh, and sometimes we don't have that. Sometimes the shift passes and he leaves no clear successor. But his students together, some some of of course, some of them might and, and would sometimes claim this what under new shift. But that, that, that's not it. You would know through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have become the truth. And Allah will put in the heart of the people your life. And then they will come to you. They will know that you have something different. It's like, you know, Titi did not call in his beloved and say hello, guess what I'm a sheikh and I like to see you come and see me and be my my, my student or my disciple or whatever. People sought him. Allah has put that connection. Okay? When he does that, it's it's like magic. People would feel that he's there. A lot of I mean I, I had the uh, we had a beautiful thing that we did for the beloved who came last year for the for the memorial. We had something we called the uh, uh, experience exchange. What was your experience with Siri? It was something that started like uh, seven o'clock in the evening, ended close to Fajr time. Like it was a long, time. and there was like 40, 50 people. Each one had to tell the story. Each one cried. And I concluded that one of them could have told the story of everyone. It was, it was that simple. Their stories were, were almost identical, despite the fact that each one of them came from a different part of the planet. The local ones, the ladies, the men, the young, the old, the ones who were with CD for the last uh, 50 years or 40 years, and the ones who followed him for uh, a few years. It was the same story. I felt, I felt the calling. Almost every one of them had a calling. And when they saw him, they, they, they felt they knew him. Okay. And, and a lot, most of them had a dream. And, and it's the combination of the story was so almost similar. That, that, that gave me that, the, the, the conclusion because see, I'm his son, it's a bit different. I did not have a dream. I woke up and he was there. So that was different. So I couldn't really connect with that very much, but it was, to me, it was amazing. Okay. Uh, I, I thought it was uh, really because the local ones who have the same uh, kind of uh, story and, and the same kind of structure and the same kind of love and compassion and, and, and every one of, the, of them said he had he felt the earth cry with joy from one side and, and with sadness that he had missed so many years before and then it was peace and then it was something majestic then the, the majesty in in the disciple comes out of discovering that he is a respectful being. He is now a being of Allah. There is a lot of pride in that. There is nothing more gives you more pride than that. You are something that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How nothing is more majestic than that. Nothing is more satisfying than that. Uh, everything else is more time, please. And then when you don't want what everybody else is looking for, everything comes chasing you. you know? uh, they come to you offering you positions. Uh, your needs become so basic when they ask, uh, Rumi was offered to be a minister in his time by the Sultan. 
and he wouldn't want, and people loved him and, 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 and so much. Everyone wants to give him things, and they want to give him money, and they want to give him palaces and trees, and all oh, I'm good, I'm good. Then one day they would ask him, how come people love you so much? He said, because I never wanted what they had. So he was not threatening anybody. He does not want anything. In the conclusion, it says, Uridu Allah Urid. I want not to want. I want to eliminate the wanting habit. Okay. Because uh, our needs are basically uh, the grooming of our hearts is really not in the ones, it's in the needs, really. The ones we all can do without. The needs, of course, some, many, most of them, of the needs, because that's why it's needs, are fundamental for our being. What we need, we need, we need love. We don't want love, we need love, because we can't really live without love, we become something else. In time, we can't live long without love. We cannot live long without peace. Uh, we can't live without injustice, really. And, and, and I'm saying we can't live, we can't live a normal life, and we cannot live a long life, and we can't live a productive life. And we cannot live a righteous life without these things. I mean, we can be alive. Uh, we can be living, living, but we cannot be alive, we cannot be... We cannot claim that we are fit for what we are made for. It's, it's kind of like when when we choose life, for instance, we we eat food that was designed for human beings. We can't eat stone. We're not designed for that. And and and, and basically, uh, the ability to to control our urges from the wants to the needs and to give the priority to the needs only. This makes us less aggressive, less uh, demanding, less struggling. Uh, so one is at peace with himself, with others. Uh, basically all, all the wars that are in, in, in the planet now, it's about wants, it's not about needs. They all got more than they need, really. It's just they want more. And, and, and even here, like, you know, when we see, uh, it's, it's very yeah, interesting that when we say about the idea of having kids, it, it's, uh, it's a need more than a want, really, because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made in our nature to, to want our time to proceed, and it is an extension of our being in, uh, in a spiritual and physical way, really. The, the, the ones who have evolved enough to, to understand our spiritual nature will, will relate to something that it, it is important because if we, if we do not know where we came from, we will never know where we're going. It is very important. And, and our life is like a dream. It's, it's, it's very interesting because our life is very short. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when he spoke about time, to teach us how little our life period is, to emphasize on the afterlife and the before life and the real life. You had a real life and you do the best thing life and you go into the real life. When he says that describing the day, of, of judgment, he says, it's a day that the spirits and the and, and the angels are are going back and forth from the earth to the heavens in a day that is forty thousand years long. Imagine that, like, see how how many years we live compared to that, and uh, to show how time is so irrelevant. Allah gave us examples in, it. in the dreams, when, when we do dreams, uh, say like, I, I dreamt that uh, I decided to go to Australia, so I went 
the Australian embassy, got my passport, got visa, uh, bought my tickets, back, all that stuff, all that stuff. And, and then I know I'm in the plane, and now I'm in the dream now, and I'm in the plane. Uh, the longest dream is only two seconds. So all this acting took two seconds of my life, and I'm waking up so tired and swaying and, and really worn out because from that very busy dream. Physically, if the dream takes more than two seconds, we probably get a heart attack and die. That shows how time is so, uh, so not applying to Allah. It's nothing. Uh, and, and when he says, when he spoke about the day of judgment, always spoke about it in the past. He says, about the day of judgment, Allah came and the angels lined up. Came. It's all, all the ayahs in the, in the Quran that spoke about the day of judgment were in the past tense. This is to show that it's a bandit. There is no way it would, this is like with all the respect when we say, when I ask somebody for something and he says, consider it done. So to Allah, it's done. There is no way it would change. To show us how, all these examples to show us how much love was put on us in the We were given so much love that deserves from us the time, to under, the time to understand. The time to understand. We need to give a chance for uh, in a way of our not paying back but uh, good behavior with our maker really to we take a chance and look at the signs he left for us everywhere. He says, he who knows himself can know Allah. So he tells you, look at yourself, study yourself, be, be with yourself, uh, do halawat with yourself, sit and pray, sit in silence, uh, read the Quran. Can you imagine something was very, very beautiful I was reading about the disciples of the Holy Prophet. They did not say, he used to say, I was reading the Quran. He used to say, I heard Allah say. So they were able to put themselves in a way. Of course, the Quran is Allah's word, Allah's talking. They were so polite, they used to say, Well, I read, I read the Quran. So that's it. It's like you read the newspaper. No, they used to say, I heard Allah say, and he would decide to act. Imagine like the presence of it. It brings them itself together. It is important for us also to study the philosophy of the of, of, uh, the practice, the philosophy of the ritual. And, and that's what Sidi has done so much in his books. Like to teach you, why do you pray that way? It's important for us to know why do we pray that way and about the content of the prayer. For instance, when you look in some small example of, of uh, in, in, in our prayer, when you say, Atasahu, Atahayatu lillahu salawatu tayyiba, salamu alayka ayyuhu nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, etc. at the end of that. Uh, most Muslims don't know what that means. It's just a lovely prayer, blessed, that's it. But it's not. It's not only that. It's, it's way deeper than that. It's a scenario that occurred uh, when Sayyidina Muhammad was, was, was delivered to the Miraj. And he would approach the heavens with Jibreel. And Allah has gathered for him all the prophets and the messengers of all time. So now Jibreel is not allowed after that stage. And uh, 
Sayyidina Muhammad would proceed. So he would go, he would say, Atahiyatullah, as- Salawat uh, al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would respond, Assalamu alaikum ayyuhu nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That means, you know, peace be upon you, O Messenger, and the blessings of Allah. The Holy Prophet, see, see how well groomed and how well mannered he was. You know, this is the rest of the Prophet. So he goes, Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salih. Okay? That means, may peace be on up, upon us and the rest of the good servants of Allah indicating the other prophets. They were so touched. They said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad an abdu wa rasul. So this was a, 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 a light scenario of a gathering that never happened like in the history of, of the existence. Probably will never be. So majestic, so powerful, so strong, so full of uh, love and teaching and compassion and, 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 and power uh, and respect. There is a lot of teachings in that story. When one is praying and thinking of that, just of that, I'm not, I'm not going to the rest of it. It's important to study the philosophy of, of the prayers and the philosophy of the Hajj. Why is it like that? It helps us stay on the path because such small things here and there, and I would say, oh, it doesn't really matter if I skip the budget or, or if I skip the Zakat this time, that's fine, or, or if I if I'm able to do Hajj, but I don't feel like it this year, all these things will, will really cause our hearts to, you know, get rusty. And with that, our transparency is affected. Sayyidina uh, Muhammad says, beware of the ability of the believer. Of the sharpness of the believer. There is no veil between the believer and Allah. He sees in the, with the eye of Allah and he comprehends with the force of Allah. So, in other words, for us to, to attain these higher levels of the nafs comes with that evolution. And our sheikhs uh, put in, in our hands the tool to dig what's in there. I mean, it, it, the beautiful story of that is, it is like uh, when you break the egg, an egg from the outside, you, you end its life. But when it's broken from the inside out, it's the beginning of that. This is a, like a small, a small example for uh, Allah gives us to, to, to show us it, show us and teach us that everything that we need is actually internal. It comes from within you. You have it. You see, it helps you out, reach to it. He puts in you the ability to bring you out. It goes back mainly and primarily to that evolution. Of course, there are uh, certain ways and, and steps, and sometimes you, if you go faster, you will not be able to see what's in the way. You will miss the signs. Then you will need the passwords on the second level. So you haven't paid attention on the first degree kind of. So you end up being lost, and some people kind of like get confused, and, and they think they want to become shifts very quickly, or they want to become more very quickly. Uh, and that's where, where really we, we do need the shift 
for this level or we we need also it is very highly advised for uh, people like us like after the passing of our uh, physical passing of our chef and master to, main, to remain together like at least to have one brother or sister or, or more because we stay we have something huge and holy and, and, and majestic and powerful and beautiful in common we we we, we trust each other we love each other we care for one another we we, we strengthen one another this way we maintain what we have accomplished. That's more dangerous even to lose what you have accomplished. Because to, get, to accomplish something is, is, is one step uh, and it's hard enough. To lose it is, is harder really. Because you have, you have almost arrived. And, and, and our example is also for like uh, there are uh, students that have shakes who are who live in other countries. So they go meet them maybe once a year and that's it. We just give them a pat and they go with it. So we were all assigned uh, a certain assignment by, by Sidi during his life. Where we have to keep on really, and we have to keep feeding it. And we, need, we have to keep uh, we may call this keeping his legacy alive, but also it's to keep his legacy in us alive. Uh, and this is what I, at least, uh, I mean, uh, with all the respect, this is what I'm, I, I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to do the things that he used to assign me to, or, or wanted me to do and, and, and this, this is the way we deal with it and, and, and one feels uh, evolving every day to a little bit higher we, one thing we should never maybe during his uh, presence we used to feel that we improve faster and that is true but it's faster because in the earlier stages the walk is faster in the advanced stages, further ahead, it becomes slower because one of us becomes a critic himself, becomes uh, with abilities to scale and think deeper and, and more than he used to before he was hungry, so hungry. This is like when you come starving, you eat fast in the beginning, and then you start munching on things little by little because now you can choose so this is almost similar to that you know in the beginning one is in supreme hunger then he knows or she knows and then they want let's see about that we want to think and, and this is the human nature and, and probably it is safe because now now you know the fact that you know uh, allows you uh, to to think, even even what is required from me is a lot more because it is say it says in the, in, the, in the spiritual philosophy, which is called the Tawheed in, in, in the Islamic studies. It says the good deeds from the special ones will not be. Ex uh, will not be accepted like it was accepted from the regular one. In other words, what is not accepted from the special ones will be gladly accepted from the regular one because to their ability, now that you know and that we have, you have evolved, you should come up with more because now you know. All your questions were answered. You have become more able so you cannot really think uh, that that you can do what you used to do last year or when you didn't know and that's fine. And the obligation becomes bigger. It's kind of like when he increases, increases knowledge, increases sorrow. 
We don't believe that it increases sorrow, but it increases the responsibility. It increases uh, ability. It increases uh, the obligation to, to spread love more, to, 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 to help more, uh, to share more, to sacrifice more. The more, the more we, we become high, higher, the more we, we can offer, we can give, of course. And, and, and basically that's what, what uh, the shakes do when, when we meet them and they are shakes, you would see that the amount they give is, is almost unconditional. Uh, at least to us, we don't see it conditional. They give more and they have so much force and power and ability to give and they will give and they don't get tired. And uh, the people are, 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 are really hard to handle and to maintain and to keep, you know, tab of this and this and that and this and this and that and that. And, and especially like most chefs when they get to that, to that level, they, they, they're, not, they're not youngsters at all. So that physicality, but subhanAllah, I mean, Allah gives them that force and that strength Things were going to serve almost to the last moment. And the secret remains. The biggest of secrets that humans have uh, always dug for and did a lot of research and studies. And In conclusion, we are the secret of Allah. We are the and we are the answer, and we are the mystery, and we, and we are the pride story of the making of Allah. Otherwise, we, he would never have said that the believer is a temple of God. What more do you want? You have become the temple of Allah. I mean, what possibly could you want more? This is it. So I mean, you know, this is uh, it, it, it's it's not that complicated, really. It, it, it's a matter of how much we uh, are willing to accept. It's all a gift. It's all a gift from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The Shaykh himself was a gift to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, I think it's, 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 uh, it is very polite that we accept the gift gracefully and graciously. Be grateful for that and enjoy, enjoy every moment of, with that gift, really. And thank you for. Uh, that opportunity for being a great audience. MashaAllah. And thank you, Mahmoud, for uh, being with us uh, today. Mm -hmm.